We're here with Bruno Escalante, MaxBoxing.com. Uh, we just watched you do the curve, uh, which I've been hearing about for weeks. I had no idea what it was. That looks uh, fairly easy. So why don't you talk about it, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was pretty hard, you know, um, we using the hypoxic training, um, like with the simulating high altitude, and you get 80% oxygen while you like, kind of like um, sprinting on a hill. So it's really, it's really hard work. You know, me, I, I got a great team. Mm -hmm. Brian and Mike Basil have been teaching me a few things, uh, you know, learning every day. And um, I feel like I'm, I'm back to uh, just learning boxing, you know, so, so yeah. I'm learning and we got, uh, you know, Victor Conti is helping me with the, with the supplements, the, the high cost training and you know, the machine. And, and we've been working with Remy Puccini too with the, the track coach. Right. So it's really a uh, really good. Uh, you know, we're, we're ready for September 20th. So what's going to happen here is the machine, the hypoxicator over there in the corner, is set at 3.5. The handy monitor just gave us a reading of 16.2 percent. When we go over here and look at 16.2 percent on the conversion chart. Got me. That's about a 7,000 foot elevation. Okay. Okay. So what he's going to be breathing is 16% oxygen. The ambient air that we're breathing right now at sea level is 20.9%, so about 21%. So we're removing the oxygen molecules and bringing it down to 16%. And the recovery is just... It's getting better. I sparred 10 rounds yesterday. It was, it was easy. It feel like easy, you know, and it's, it's good. To the speed, the whole purpose of the biggest thing on this is not to take too long to get to that mile per hour. Don't start slow and then get possible. Because you're going to hold that for about 20 seconds. So I want him to get to it as fast as possible. I don't like him to hold the ends and then pick up the speed and jump on it. I want him to start from the pretty much from the ground, from a dead stop, I want him to go. The target is, once he's doing this all out, is to bring his blood oxygen saturation down to a target of 80, plus or minus 2%. So we're looking for numbers in the 78 to 82% range. Gotcha. We're gonna get his heart rate, both before and after <clears throat> each repetition. Mike Basil will step up here and he'll record the miles per hour the maximum uh, during that 20 second interval, the maximum miles per hour that Bruno achieves. And uh, then he's going to take an oximeter between each repetition, put it on Bruno's finger, and then he's gonna measure his heart rate and his blood oxygen saturation and notate it. So this will all, once we get started, happen very quickly, but it's, it's really about sprint interval training in hypoxia. That's what we're doing today. And this is a, a curve machine, which is a non-motorized uh, treadmill with a curve to it. It's kind of like running uphill a bit. But the idea is, is you're not limited and, and uh, like a treadmill to the number of miles per hour that that can go. As fast as you can run is as fast as this will go. As soon as I did that, I, I got confidence that when, I'm, when I get tired, I know I can recover. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I, on the fight, on, uh, when I hurt somebody, I, I know if I'm gonna attack them, I'm gonna, I'm gonna recover quick. This way, the benefit of this type of training, sprint interval training in hypoxia, is to increase power output, so it's about power, and increase speed, and what we're attempting to do here in the research, it shows that it, this type of training actually stimulates the type 2B fast twitch muscle fiber. More is developed. They've actually done biopsies and seen that you can develop more fast twitch muscle fiber. To be, the goal doesn't have to be he's going to 15,000 feet. The goal is hitting the target. Of 80% blood oxygen That's saturation. the goal, where it's at. If, me, if all of us go to Big Bear, and we all train together, one of us might be hitting the target on that day. We're all doing the same workout at the same elevation. There's not like, well, well I'm, not, I'm not doing so well. I gotta go down at 2,000 feet. There's none of that. You got your 
and this way, like say, as opposed to somebody putting, you know, HGH into your body, your body is reacting to what it's naturally is happening to it, as opposed to kind of topping it off with other things. That's exactly right. It's what they call a feedback loop. So you give this signal, and then the adaptive mechanism of, uh, mechanisms of the body kick in, and that's what causes this is a stronger signal, a greater metabolic disturbance, as they call it. Uh, then you've obviously got to do everything you can through nutrition uh, to enhance the recovery and tissue repair, and of course then you become uh, stronger and faster. Everything. I think it, it builds a lot of confidence, you know, because when you uh, when you have that 80% uh, oxygen, you know, you you're, you're you get tired, you get tired, and and it's, I feel like it's harder than sparring. Actually, your body a little. So bit this though. is very very strenuous training. And what's the basic idea and the reason for the 20 second interval of exertion is we're looking at that conversion from the ATP system to the glycolytic system where you start burning glycogen as fuel. And so we're taking you through that to, to that transition between the use of ATP and the use of glycogen as an energy source. That's why there's 20 seconds and then we rest in 12. Because of the training we, uh, we have here, you know, like the hypoxic training with Remy Cochini sprinting and Mike Basil, you know, all this uh, strength conditioning and, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really give me confidence to, uh, to finish whatever rounds, you know, schedule.